Nej. I'm Adam from Legends of Shield Longbox Edition, a podcast member of the Gunna Geek Network, just like the one you're listening to now. The opinions expressed are those of each individual. Check out all the other podcasts at gunnageeknetwork.com and get ready because geekiness begins in 3, 2, 1. You have been granted clearance by director Phil Coulson. Stand by for S.H.I.E.L.D. debriefing. All information to be discussed here is classified and may only be discussed among agents granted clearance by the S.H.I.E.L.D. director. Now it's time for your scheduled debriefing. I'm Agent Stargate Pioneer. And I'm Steven John Drew, network owner. Welcome to Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., a Marvel Comic Universe podcast. This is podcast number 110, discussing Agent Carter Season 2, Episode 10, Hollywood Ending. This podcast is recorded on Wednesday, March 2nd, 2016. Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a fan-based podcast on the ABC television show Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Marvel's Agent Carter, Marvel's Daredevil, and Jessica Jones on Netflix, in the general Marvel comic universe. Because insubordination always gets the guy. If you'd like to talk about bad behavior at work rewarding your relationships, you can find us on our website at legendsofshield.com. Our voicemail, 844-THE-BUS-1. That's 844-843-2871. We have a Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. All search for Legends of Shield, you'll find it. And also, our YouTube channel, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. It's youtube.com slash gonna geek. And then also, we're on the gonna geek.com network. Today on Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., we're going to be giving out some network congratulations. We're going to be talking about our next giveaway for the podcast. We're going to be talking about the Chicago Comic and Entertainment Expo. We're going to be talking, of course, about Agent Carter Hollywood ending. We're going to be talking about a little, little bit, little bit, little bit of Marvel news, your feedback and highlights from the live Blab chat room. Mr. Steven, network owner, sir. Yes, yes. What's up? <laughs> Tell everybody what we got going on on the YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is quite an interesting, diverse place to be. We have a variety of Gunna Geek network programming over there. It has been a rapid increase in the last year. We have the official GunnaGeek.com podcast, which is posted and streamed there. We have the Better Podcasting podcast, hosted by a couple of schmucks, uh, also on the YouTube side of things. We have the All Things Good and Nerdy every Sunday. You, that streams live on there. If that's not enough and you like the CW show Arrow, you can check out the Starling Tribune, which gets posted on there. And wrapping it all up, Chris Farrell from Nerd Alert News, he does put his show up there as well. So you definitely want to go to youtube.com slash gonna geek and subscribe because there's a lot of great content there and uh, we're always adding more. Occasionally we'll put a review in there or something, but uh, it doesn't stop there. We will always, always be adding to that YouTube repertoire. Absolutely. It is fun to see the subscribers rise on the channel and also the great content, the value added content and entertainment. It is there for the taking. Go grab it. Go get it. Go watch it. All right. I am going to talk about some exciting things that are happening on the network this week. First of all, congratulations to all things good and nerdy. That's ATGN. They hit number 200 this Sunday. That is 200 podcast episodes. It is a great feat in podcasting. And I just want to say congratulations to the current crew of Chris Farrell, of Naki, of Willie D. Nelson. Yes, that Willie Nelson. No, not that Willie Nelson. <laughs> and Anthony Bach. You guys are great. You guys keep on going on every Sunday, yeah. just uh, that Sunday morning kind of just easing into the back end of the weekend. And you guys are fantastic. 200 episodes. Wow. Steven, have you ever done a podcast with 200 episodes on it? I have never done a podcast with 200 episodes. And, and I think we brush over something quite often when we've talked about this 200 here. We've talked about it on a few shows. 
It is every Sunday morning. Do you know how many Sunday mornings I've just wanted to lay in bed? And these guys for 200 episodes have been up on Sunday mornings doing ATGN. Amazing, amazing. Four years. It's four. If it's every week and there's 52 weeks a year, say they take one week off here or there. That's four years of podcasting. Congratulations. I have never actually had a podcast that's had uh, over 200 episodes. I've been on a podcast that's had over 200 episodes, but that wasn't me. I was just coming in, riding on the coattails. That's what SP does. Take advantage of the, <laughs> the opportunities. And also, perhaps the bigger of the two announcements that are in the show notes, Keir Hansen and Julie got hitched last weekend. So congratulations to our newlywed couple on the network here. All he produces in defense of, and that is on the Gunna Geek Network. And also, he is one of the main co-hosts on Galfrey Public Radio, the Doctor Who podcast on the network, and as such, is one of Haley's co-hosts on that. So congratulations. I know they're off on their honeymoon right now, so they better not be listening to this, but congratulations to you too. That's great. And as a final note, that is not in the show notes deliberately. We have to congratulate our network owner, Mr. Stephen John Drew, for having his last day of his 20s and he's podcasting stepping in taking the bullet for legends of shield one of the network podcasts yes it is his birthday tomorrow so happy last 29th day sir thank you very much for that sp uh i love podcasting so how else should i end the run of my run in the 20s other than podcasting i could be your dad so Haley and Lauren, thank you very much for missing tonight because I know you did that just for me. So thank you very much. <laughs> Absolutely. For those of you who are listening to this later, we touched upon it in the pre-show. Haley and Lauren are on a little quest. We've sent them off. They are searching for Dottie. She got away and we didn't see Peggy Carter wrap her up a little bit more on that later, but somebody has to go looking for her. So we tapped two of our key agents, that is Haley and Lauren, and they are looking for Dottie right now. They're trying to get her back under control. So we wish them well and they will be back next week. All right. Last week, we gave away our Guardians of the Galaxy Marvel crate. This week, we are going to start the deadpool crate yes if you're on the youtube side of things or watching stuff on blab you actually see the deadpool crate over my shoulder and it is the marvel collector core deadpool crate it came out shortly before the movie and all this can be yours but you have to do something don't they steven yes yes they do what you want to do is go and uh this is interesting. What, what you're wanting to do is give us your vision of a date between now. Now, brace yourselves between Deadpool and Peggy Carter. What oh, kind of date is, is that going to be? Like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it is going to be fun. So yes, this has got it's got to be entertaining, creative, and just get it to us anyway. If you if you can fit it in a tweet, go ahead and catch us at our Twitter account at Legends of Shield, Facebook account, email. You can catch me Stargate Pioneer at GunnaGeek.com. So any way that you can get this to us, you can use our voicemail line. That would be great. The things it, it's got cobwebs in it. Come on, folks, give us a voicemail. That's eight four four the bus one, and tell us what your vision is of the date between Deadpool and Peggy Carter. And then, of course, the most entertaining and the most uh, whatever Haley. Because let's face it, Haley and Lauren get together and they outvote me every time. So whatever they choose is going to happen. And I think it's very ironic we had this contest announced by our network owner, Mr. Stephen, who has uh, been completely shut out of future <laughs> Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. contests because wait, of wait, his... Which, let's just pause here for a moment and realize that what that means is that if you, too, give a very sarcastic and, and somewhat embarrassing to yourself entry to the contest, you might end up at filling this seat on Legends of Podcast <laughs> or Legends of Podcast, face. Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. 
<laughs> that's your punishment you have to come on and be on the podcast and then give away yeah. the next thing yeah exactly so he did cancellation canary as the howard starks menagerie animal and uh, since that was indicative of agent carter getting canceled we have to say oh no 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 sir you shall not pass <laughs> and he is ineligible for any future legends of shield podcast giveaways there you go. So, Stephen, mm -hmm. just in a couple of weeks, do you know what's going on with network personnel? It's your network, after all. I really hope that I do. I really hope that I do. <laughs> and uh, what we're talking about is that the Gunna Geek Network, a bunch of us, not me, unfortunately, are getting together at the Chicago Comic Convention. I believe it's the Chicago Fan Comic and <laughs> X, something like that. It's Chicago C2E2. C2E2. Chicago, <laughs> Chicago Comic Ex Entertainment Expo. That's there what we it go. is. It goes by C2E2. That's the most important thing. And, and, and you need to know what's in Chicago. And there is going to be a, a diverse panel of podcasters, including Naki and Chris and Willie from ATGN, uh, Cody Goth, Beef, as well as the one and only Stargate Pioneer. They will be hosting a, a sort of a workshop on everyday life as a podcaster. So please, please, on March 18th, if you are going to C2E2, please do check out room S503 at 245 because it is going to be an amazing convention. Lots of things. I've been involved with the planning. Lots of really cool things happening. And uh, I, I really, really do wish that I could have been there. And who knows? If you show up, maybe you'll find something that might help you with podcasting. Hmm. Maybe some something that starts with an S and ends with a G, hmm? uh, otherwise known as swag. Yes, you might get some swag. So come on down and we can give you something that hopefully will enhance your podcasting life. And you get to hang out with us and we get to meet you. So we're looking forward to that. And that, once again, is... Friday, March 18th at 2.45 in room S503 at C2E2. Woohoo! We made it to the end of Agent Carter. Boo, we made it to the end of Agent Carter. We'll talk to you a little bit about that later. As we start every Agent Carter, any episode, we're going to be talking about the director and the writers. In this case, it is plural writers. It was directed by Jennifer Getzinger, and we talked about her before. She did two episodes of Agent Carter, 10 episodes of Mad Men, Orange is the New Black, Revenge, 1600 Pen. I didn't mention it before, but that was a funny show. I'm surprised it got canceled. I liked 1600 Pen. It was fun. Steven, did you ever watch 1600 Pen? No, I can't say that I had. You are missing out. It is way funnier than Corner Gas. Way funnier than Corner Gas. You, you got to check that out. And, uh, of course, uh, the episode of Hung that we talk about last time and the ladies like the Hung episode, that's for sure. And it was written by... Steven, do you know who it was written by? It was. It was written by Chris Dingus. And the teleplay was by Michelle, I'm terrible with last names. Fazekas. Fazekas. Uh, Chris, you may recognize from a couple of Agent Carter episodes. Uh, nine being human episodes. Eleven men in trees. Five Ed. And also is an agent. In, in, wow. An Agent Carter executive producer. Michelle, you may recognize from other Agent Carter episodes. Done three of them. Two of Dollhouse. Two of Ed. And also an Agent Carter executive producer or in the business they call it an EP that's right and it was also teleplay as we talked about last week by Tara Butters she did three episodes of Agent Carter two episodes of Dollhouse two episodes of Ed and is an Agent Carter executive producer as we talked about last week hmm that looks familiar. That's because these two work as a team. Their IMDb's are exactly the same, and that is why they do the Fazekas and Butters production company. Okay, Steven, this was a fun episode. It was, was. a good episode. Do you not agree? I agree, and I am so glad that they did this as a one hour thing rather than a, a two back to back uh, like they've done the last couple of weeks, because I think it would have taken away from this episode doing it that way. It was so nice to see it done in this manner. It was. 
And I think it served, if it has to, as a good series finale. Now, they haven't made an announcement officially either way of whether they're going to come back or not. They did leave a lot of storylines open, but let's face it, this is the Marvel Extended Universe. They can put this story bits and pieces wherever they want to. Agent, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., they can put it on the, the new... Uh, a Mockingbird series next year. They could put it in any of the movies. They could put it on Netflix. It doesn't have to just belong here. So even if they do cancel it, the story isn't necessarily over with. So just be prepared for that. But low ratings. Uh, Haley Atwell herself has been cast in another pilot. Uh, it's not looking good for Agent Carter next year. It just isn't. Marvel's Most Wanted, by the way, is the Mockingbird uh, show that will be in the pilot for next year and we don't know if that's going to air concurrently with agents of shield in the main uh areas like arrow and flash do in the flaro universe over in dc <laughs> or if it's going to be a mid-season filler or not we just don't know there's a lot that we don't know at the moment but we're hanging on tight and this was an excellent both season and series if it has to be finale don't you agree steven i agree and what's nice about the elements that they've left there is that you're right. You can go back with it. For example, searching for Dottie. If our agents on here can't find her, we could we can make her reappear or or a descendant. Probably can't make her reappear, but make a descendant reappear in Agents of Shield, which then we could get a flashback to that. Right? Like it it is such a powerful universe, and I think that they they've just left it in in a good position in either situation. Uh, me personally, I'm I'm still hoping hoping somehow for a miracle and that something happens because I really like this show. Uh, last night I was sitting there with my heart par partially uh, hurting and, and just broken because I knew it might be the last one. Yeah, and it was so fun. It was a fun episode to watch. It, it was, was fantastic. It was just one of the things that it, it, it was entertaining. It is everything I would like a show to be. And they cancel there or they might cancel it. So I'd be a sigh there. Um, you know, I think it, it's just at this point in time where Haley and Lauren, had they not been on the search for Dottie, would come in and say that this was Marvel's feminine lead show and they don't have it. But we have Marvel's Most Wanted, which, of course, Mockingbird will be. So I. I don't want to overhype this too much, but it was just a great show, and the fact that ABC might cancel it is just, uh, whatever. But it, it started off from the beginning, and let me just roll into this, because I thought of it based on our podcast before. At the beginning, Sam Burley did not do what Peggy said. He did what... <laughs> what Thompson said to do because he pulled a gun on but it was mm -hmm. kind of funny because before they both said do as Peggy says and he did not do as Peggy no. says this time <laughs> I actually really like that opening shot because you you see what we saw last week and then and then it goes over um and the camera pans over to see uh the gun on Samberly and then goes over and sees Carter holding the gun like I just thought it was a really good opening shot and uh, it was just showing this sort of circle of power that's been going on the entire season. It was a great way to open it up, uh, just sort of recapping that all in one simple, simple scene. Yeah. And of course, it was a carryover from last time. And we thought that Thompson blew the cannon at the same time that Wilkes came in the room. Not so. The cannon didn't blow up. Nope. It was a zero matter bomb. Just bloosh, all over the everywhere. And apparently it killed anybody that didn't have zero matter in them. Yeah. But then there's all the zero matter came together into Frost. And she became the big bad one last time. Yeah, that was that was interesting. I actually didn't I didn't see it happening so quick. Like I, I had the one it left last week. I thought that we were going to get like a brief moment where we didn't know that she actually had it in her. But it was just like instantly into the fact that, oh, there you go. Everything that happened the previous episode, it doesn't matter because she's got it all all to herself now. <laughs> and it was so quick, but uh, still it was fun. Yeah. And then Jarvis 
runs over <laughs> Frost. <laughs> that was yeah. perfect. And uh, I, I like Stark's reaction there. What, what was it? Something to the effect of, uh, you hit a girl with my car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't good. worry. She'll get better. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's only a flesh wound. She'll yeah. get better. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, Stark uh, and Donna Girl points out in chat that Stark was saying, you just ran over an Oscar nominee or Oscar winner or whatever he said. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was right. funny. That was good. But then Wilkes is back to normal. I didn't know that was going to happen. That was so cool. All the zero matter left him, but he was OK. And we learn a little bit more about what's going on, what's going on with the zero matter. And and Haley and Lauren and I have been speculating all season about this. But we learn that the, whatever this is has consumed everything on the other side of the universe so i have a little bit of bone to pick with the whole plot if that's the case why would it want to go back at all why would it want to create that line in to the rest of the universe i don't understand because if it's all here and all of it's ready to consume is here why would it want to go back yeah no i had the same question uh plot hole, mm. <laughs> plot hole. marvel this, you need this I was going to say, this is why Haley and Lauren need to be writers for you, Marvel. They would not let that go. No, they would not. Just a small, small plot hole. Overall, it was fun. So we uh, one thing I have to point out is we never saw Bernard Stark again this entire season after episode two, after Flamingo and Chill. We never saw Bernard Stark. And I I'm sad about that because it was a, a MacGuffin that went absolutely nowhere. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know, I thought for sure there'd be some form of payoff with that later. And uh, I guess it was just a just something to make us laugh and move on, apparently. I guess. So what do you think about Manfredi coming in and holding Jarvis at gunpoint? Uh, I had no idea how that was going to go. When I saw that, I, I did not expect that ending the way that it was through a, a previous relationship with Stark and in a joking manner because he's been such a, I don't know, I've, I thought that he was a fun villain in this series this this year. And, and it's basically like he's buddy-buddy with Stark and he's the whole reason why we end up getting... A getting things happening a little bit later in the episode, which we'll touch on. So I just thought, like, it totally did not see that that coming that in that manner. I didn't. He was one of two flips. Thompson was the other flip. Yeah. Like Thompson completely flipped at the end of the episode. Although I don't trust him at all. And even if he is still alive, uh, as we go forward, it, it, he's shot at the end of the episode. Spoiler: He's shot. He's in the chest. There's blood all over the hotel carpet. Look at that hotel bill, huh? And, and, <laughs> and so he's basically left for dead. And you know what I thought about that? That was the show saying, hmm, I don't think we can afford this guy if we come back next year. So let's kill him off. You know, I, I still stand by it. I actually don't think Thompson was a bad guy. I still think that he was playing both sides of it because I, I actually think that he was smarter than Sousa in the fact that. Uh, he knew if I go against the grain, this is not good. And he knew that that would happen and, and it played out in Sousa. So I actually thought that he was he was playing a more political agenda this entire season. And I thought that that was uh, that was really emphasized by the fact that at the end, he questions Peggy on whether or not she actually would have shot him. Um, yeah, that was an interesting I, conversation. It was. In that conversation, he gives her the key. So the key is not stolen. Peggy has the key. Yeah. So I, I do think, I really do think that uh, he he was on the good side, but he was playing it politically. And I think the fact that he would even question whether or not Peggy would have done that shows me that he, he definitely was playing the good side, just playing it politically. I guess I, I think he still had a little bit of him that wanted to hook up with Peggy. And he's not a playboy, and not at all like Ray Wise was in this series. But <laughs> I, I sensed a little bit of that. Like he was like, well, me, you know, maybe. But at the end, he's trying to get his ducks in the row because he still thinks he's going to get fired when he gets back because Peggy's going to rat on him, and that's why he's being good. He's trying to suck up to her this entire episode, and he needs her to figure help figure out what that key was because he yeah. has no idea. Yeah. And and jumping a bit ahead again, I just love that how much in that final scene he just hates 
hates Hollywood. He just hates it. Like, I, I love how much he hates California. He hates it all. And he just wants to get back to New York. And I don't know. I just, I see him as such a, a usual, what, 40s, 50s style character. And I, like, a, a typical, stereotypical New York style character. And I love that uh, they just emphasize that at the end, that he's just New Yorker through and through. New Yorker. <laughs> I can't do the accent. I'm not going to try. I was born there, so I, <laughs> I'm entitled to at least try. Okay. I'm a Brooklyn okay. kid. So me and Steve Rogers have something in common. A lot more than you, Mr. Captain Canuck or whatever you are. Sounds good. Sounds good. So let, let's talk about that Frost scene where they are getting into Frost's lab. And... Oh, yeah. Her, her little dressing room uh, slash lab slash... Yep evil mad scientist whatever that was awesome with the two they're taking pictures of the walls but you know what they really want to be doing is taking pictures of each other <laughs> i i had to think to myself like you guys you guys are secret agents and and you're taking pictures of each other when she's out just out in the other room and she can kill you like that like eh, maybe not the best just best judgment there but Oh, well. It's what they do. They're spies. It's they they thrive on the danger of the situation. That's true. That's true. And uh, how about that little funny moment there where? Um, oh, now I'm drawing a, a, a uh, blank on his name. But anyways, they end up finding out that yes, indeed, uh, Mister Mister uh, Henchman has turned, and uh, it was all set up. I thought <laughs> yeah, that, that was funny. <laughs> With the frat feds, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, they came. They they um I threatened my family. I had to do it. And he's like, oh, ah, now I gotta kill you. Oh, wait, yeah. Whitney. <laughs> so you know yeah. the guy hightailed it after that. Exactly. <laughs> he's like out of there. I love the debate, the science bro, the early science bro debate about the hover car. Yeah, I, I invented it first. Does it work? Yeah. <laughs> well, the second one did. Yeah, that, that was awesome. that little three threesome there that they had was just so funny. Uh, it was it was good rapport off of each other. Samberly, Stark, and Wilkes. That's the threesome we're talking about. Yeah. And they they definitely needed their, all their brain power in order to bring the, this back. Although when Stark left and he went to Peru, obviously he met up with uh, Vanko or had the idea, and he Vanko will come in later. He did mention start going to. Malibu and starting up the shop there, which would be the arc reactor, I think. And uh, that is, of course, where Tony St we find Tony Stark's living at the beginning of Iron Man in 2008. So I think that was the nice transition there. I, once again, how this could end up as being a series finale because they left that as mm -hmm. the where Stark was finally. But it was great. It took all three of them. And of course, with all three of them, they still didn't get it right. They still created something that had a bad part. <laughs> Stark's yeah. like, I'm going to, I'm going to go do it. I built it. I should have built it better. Oh, well. And they're like, why do why do you have to do it? I'll just go. And Piggy's like, I'll go. And of course, Susan's <laughs> like, uh, guys, I'm going to do this. And he's already over the line. They're like, yeah. oh, crap. Yeah. Uh, so Samper Lee likes pickled herring. Apparently, uh, good to know. Good to know. Great advice. Did, did you or, think he died? Did you think she sucked him I up? I did. I actually thought that he was he was gone. Um, but I don't know. I, part of me wanted was like, please don't be, please don't be. But my heart knew that he was. So it was so nice to actually see that he was alive. And I, I like how he just shows up. He was like, I, I didn't pass out. I passed out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I totally passed out. Yeah. Yeah. So Samberly. And Rose, they didn't take their relationship any further. So that's something that could be explored later, if possible. These are, let's face it, these are secondary characters. Although I will say one thing. In my mind, she could, Frost, could have let a little bit of uh, zero matter, I was going to say dark matter, zero matter go mm -hmm. and embed itself into Samberly. So Samberly could still be a carrier of zero matter. Hmm. It's comic books, man. It's comic it books. Be. Could happen. Could be. I, yeah. I, I don't think so, but could be. <laughs> yeah, you don't think so. And I'm the one who thinks Sitwell is not dead. Go figure. <laughs> I done a girl in the chat said, love how Susa just charged in to turn a crank without a word. I mean, he yeah. just did it. And that's the type of guy that Susa is. And that's the type of guy, apparently, that it takes to get Peggy Carter. 
Exactly. And and I think though that that example there of Sousa going in is an example of why he did not do the Thompson thing of playing the political game. And he he just said, no, no, Vern, I'm not going to do that. And uh, he ended up getting outcast because of it. And uh, it's just Sousa. Sousa is a very, very uh, good through and through guy, except for his little Hydra component. But other than that, he's a great guy. I got to say something for the ladies since they're not here. Okay. They got the kiss. They did the kiss. They did the thing. They got it. I finally got it. And it was like a 40s Hollywood style kiss where they're all sucking face o- o- over each other out on the desk in the office. That's great. And Adana it made my gir- heart smile. It made my heart smile. A Donna girl in the chat said, squee. Yeah. <laughs> She's got to be the voice of the ladies since they're off finding Dottie. Let me say that again. The ladies <laughs> are off finding Dottie. Or they could be interviewing with Marvel, too. I, you know, it could be just what they told me. That's true. Probably a non-disclosure agreement at the end when cal showed up in frost's room (gasps) were you thinking like what the heck's going on yeah you know i fell for it i did not foresee it being her mind i i thought that it was actually like us seeing the oh they're gonna be up to no good again like you know this is this is not over and then she's she's insane she's clinically insane she looks like hell and uh my heart hurt for him. It really did because, you know, it's just a shell of the woman that he loved. It was. It, this is a great origin story, though. The zero matter is gone. So it's caused her basically to go insane because she's had a rough. Uh, we see her origin throughout the entire 10 episode series. We see her ruined childhood. We see her go to Hollywood and get really jaded by what's going on. She's a really intelligent person, but she just gets treated like crap over and over again. And then. She gets a sense of power, and that sense of power is the one thing that takes her away from her work when Manfredi needs to interrogate his guy, and she she's like, oh, you need me? Oh, you're, I'm the strong one? Oh, yeah, I'll be there. And then she figures out, well, wait, I'm, I need to actually go do this because what's over there is actually more important. So she goes back, but she's drawn to the power. She's drawn to being the person in charge, and without the zero matter, it's going to be incredibly hard for her to do it. However, don't Mm -hmm. underestimate a crazy, mad scientist uh, locked away in an insane asylum. That can never go wrong. Oh, I think that that's a great, like, I think that the way they've left that is a great setup. If we don't, let's theoretically say Agent Carter came back for another season, we don't see anything about, uh, about Frost I think that that would be a great payoff, actually, in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or something down the road where she's maybe built an entire empire or something like that. I think I think that you're right. It is set up in such a manner that we could see we could flash back, see her at this moment and then see the way that she gets out. She ends up with a vendetta. Like, I think that it it, it, it opens a big opportunity to use her in this show or, or another if this had another season. So. Right. Really looking forward to how they tend to end this because I just don't think it's ended. So the question for you, who do you think shot Thompson? That is a great question. And I have been thinking about that from yesterday and I don't I don't actually have any theories. Um, I I can't think of I think my guess is it's actually a, a hitman. And the, if there was another season, we would find out who it is and it would be a new character. That That's my guess at this point. But what do you got? The only thing I can think of is that it was Dottie posing as somebody else. I did take a look at the the shoes. They were male shoes, but they weren't excessively full shoes. So it could have been a small foot inside it. Now, Dottie is tall. We know that. So she was definitely uh, towering above Thompson as she came in. And uh, it, I think it could be her. It, don't discount it. Don't don't discount it at all. So a Donna girl in the chat said, I've been hearing some rumors about the file and who may have shot Jack. So that's important. Whoever shot Jack took the file. And this is the fake file. We uh, assume it's the fake file on what happened with Peggy Carter. Why did they need that file back? Yeah, it's another great question, Um, especially because it's Peggy Carter, right? Like you would you would expect if it was about somebody else, you know, Foreman, Red Foreman, maybe. Uh, I had to say Red Foreman on your cast, but uh, maybe, maybe that would <laughs> that would make more sense. But the fact that it's dirt on Peggy, 
is is odd to me that somebody is taking that and shooting Thompson for it because you, you, they could get that another way. So I, I don't know. So a downer girl in the chat said, I will share the rumor if y'all want. Yes, please do. We're going to be talking about this for a little while longer and we'll end with that. But so it is interesting that they chose to end on that. Now, if I if you think that this is a C series finale, you would think that they would want to tie it up. But it's mm. it uh, once again, it's Marvel, so they can do they can bring this up anywhere else. And they can even bring this up in Civil War. This could have been a Civil War lead-in, and we wouldn't have any idea about it. Yeah. You know, the the thing about tying it up, though, is, like, they, they're they not known whether or not. So they got to leave some breadcrumbs to get people to come back if there's another season, right? And and that was a very big breadcrumb. Yeah, just, just a little bit. <laughs> okay. And so uh, Adana Girl is saying that rumor has it that M. Carter <gasps> is Michael. Peggy's bro and his death in 1940 was fake. Oh, I can't believe I didn't think about that. That is so awesome. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it. Thank you very much, Adana Girl, for bringing that up. All right, Mr. Steven, do you have anything else from the episode that you would like to bring up at this time? Uh, I really, really like, and and this is sort of, this episode sort of uh, summarizes everything that I love about Asian Carter. There was a good amount of seriousness, was a good amount of comedy, like, even in our our climactic moment where they are, who's going to die? Is Susan going to make it? What's going to happen? We have comedy injected as they're holding and pulling the rope. We got Stark making a comment about uh, not having bad thoughts on Peggy. And he goes, oh, wait, there it is. And it's just like a great balance. And this episode just encompasses every reason why I really am hoping for some miracle to happen and a season three to occur with Agent Carter because it really was a great balance of it all. It was. So I podcast on Arrow. We, of course, podcast on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. on this show. In the network, we have Crimson Comet podcasting about Flash. We have Like a Girl podcasting about Supergirl. Until this series started, Supergirl was like the extreme fun series. Now, Flash is the funner between Flash and Arrow, but it's it got serious this year. It wasn't as fun as it was during s season one. So out of all of these, this was the show that I, I laughed. I literally was on the edge of my seat at some points in time. I, I always caught the episode, not just because I'm podcasting about it, but because I wanted to see it and I wanted to interact with people as they're tweeting live or live tweeting about it. And so I will sorely miss the show if this was the last episode but this entire 10 episodes was great and i really my hat is off to the fazikas and butters production team my hat is off to marvel for actually putting this lighter show sandwiched in between their half seasons of agent agents of shield and yeah. i i really like what marvel is doing in all their properties it's it's a fun area to be in right now I agree. I agree. And I have one question before we go off of this here. Obviously, ratings have been down a little bit. Um, what is your your thoughts on the placement of Agent Carter? Because I'll tell you mine. I'll start with mine. Mine is that I love the show. I get excited. I got excited about it last year. I got excited about it this year. But the first two, three episodes, as much as I like them, I sat, sat there often thinking about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Like, I want to know what's going to happen next with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Because I'm right in the middle of it. I have no resolve really for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. because it's in the middle of a season. I, I wonder if this se series would do better basically bumping Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. up and doing it after Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Like for me, I think I would enjoy it as much as I enjoy Agent Carter now. I think I would enjoy Agent Carter even more if it was after Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. How about you, SB? Wow, that's a great question. I will counter and say, if you take a look at Sweep's months, it's October, February, and May. And that is based on an old production model that is no longer really in play these days because with time-delayed content, with DVRs and whatever, that's not necessarily true anymore. However, they're still treating the Sweep's weeks within the Sweep's months as being like the key areas where they get their ratings that they can then put into their advertising demographics and stuff like that. So if you consider that, May is where you want your big season finales or series finales. It's May. And if you push Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. up, 
to the point where you're doing Agent Carter afterwards, I don't think that's going to work. I think if they do choose, and I don't know which way they're going to go, Marvel's Most Wanted in between, you're actually going to have a continuation of a story possibly because they're actually at the same time. So I, I think that that might work better for them. But then it, what made this work so well is it was back in the 40s and they didn't have to be modern about it. They didn't have to explain superheroes because there were no superheroes back then. Yeah. There, there was Captain America, but really nobody else. And Captain America's off the plate for another 50 years. So 60 years or whatever it is. So I, I think that yeah, it's a tough sell, but I... I I don't think that what you are recommending would really work because of that May big finale time frame. That's a fair point. It, it It's a fair point. And I, I don't know, I guess just for me, like, I, I, I guess I look at more from the viewership perspective, you know, the sweeps, you're absolutely right on that. But, you know, uh, it'll be interesting to see. I still really hope even if this doesn't come back next year that we get a, uh, a revisit of it in a, in a couple more years, maybe something like that happens where it'll pop back eventually, but, uh, I enjoy it. And, uh, I, am like I said, I've said it a few times, really, really hoping something happens and we get a season three. Yep. Or, or at least a couple of episodes next in the middle of, of this. Cause I think 10 episodes was too long. They had to back to back a couple of three of the weeks. It just, it wasn't working for, that's how, when you're considering you're watching another show on another network like Flash, and then you're watching this for two hours, it was, Tuesday nights were very long, so, in any event, Haley's not here, but we did pull some quotes from the episode, are you ready for quotes, sir? I'll give it my best, but uh, nobody can top Haley. Nobody can. Although, did you listen to the Deadpool episode number 108 of Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D.? I have to admit, I did not because I've not seen Deadpool yet. At so. the end of that episode, Beef and Haley went quote for quote for about five minutes. It was hysterical. It was amazing. You got to go see Deadpool. I know you got some time on your hands this weekend, Mr. Birthday Boy. So go see Deadpool and then come back and listen to Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. number 108 and just listen to the quotes. But I digress. Let's get to the quotes for this episode. Well, what? Quick question for you. Quick question for you. Yeah. Deadpool, superhero movie, so I can bring my three-year-old movie, three-year-old with me, right? I think you can bring both your kids to it. Absolutely. <laughs> no, no, no. Stargate Pioneer does not advise bringing anybody under 18 to that movie. No, 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 no. And Mad Hatter in the chat said, no! Okay. I was joking, by the way. I was joking. <laughs> right. We've talked about it enough on the network. Okay. Watch your step. There's zero matter on the floor. <laughs> Darvis says, Miss Frost is quite resilient. She's fine. Trust me. Or, when she bowls her over with a car. Star I love this quote. Stark, don't get down on yourself, Mr. Or Dr. Wilkes. Peggy's life is always getting threatened. I'm just saying, maybe the problem is you. Oh, I can't believe you went there. That made me laugh so, so much. And it's just, oh, I just love that character. Such a good character. It is. Uh, Frost goes, don't touch me while I'm working. Yeah, don't touch me while I'm working. I'm like, hey. And that's what, that's when Man Freddy was like, oh. But here's I mean, the thing. Do you really want to touch her at all? He did. I, you, they, they had to have been sleeping together. I he pictured went... separate beds. You know, sort of the Lucy and Ricky type thing. <laughs> uh, Wilkes, may I ask you a question? Is there a portrait of you in every bedroom? <laughs> uh, that was good. We have uh, the Manfredi and Stark. Well, you can't steal my underwear. I told you then, and I'm telling you now, you can't wear your skivvies in a Schwitz. <laughs> and Stark says, how do the most successful scientists achieve greatness? Jarvis responds, Given your history, drinking copious amounts of alcohol and <laughs> cavorting, cavorting with loose women. That's right. Cavorting. Wow. I drew a blank on that. <laughs> that was great. Jarvis is perfect on that. Yeah. Uh, so this is Sousa and Carter in the mad scientist lab. Can you decipher it? I don't speak megalomaniac. Fortunately, Howard Stark does. <laughs> uh, then we had Howard say, show hands. Who here has invented a hover car? Nope. Nobody? I win. It didn't even work. 
The second, second one, one did. did. <laughs> <laughs> and here's Carter uh, butting in moments after that quote said, well, I'd like to postpone the Armageddon if I can help it. Yes, there are many obstacles, but I'm standing in front of three of the most radiant minds on the planet. Surely you can find a way to overcome the obstacles. I believe you can actually hear the sound of their egos growing. <laughs> that made me laugh so much when I saw that. I actually backed up that just to hear it again. That was, <laughs> that so, was funny. so great. That was yeah. so great. Uh, Thompson goes, okay, look, I'm not a scientist, but I'm here to help. Carter responds, how about collecting the dinner orders? <laughs> Thompson was relegated to going to get dinner, including pickled herrings. That's and I love great. that too, because originally he tries to pass it off and then he just goes and, and does it because he realizes, okay, this is, this is what I got to do. This reminded me of a special Stargate episode. What am I doing wrong, Jarvis? Sir, we are standing before an incomprehensible rip in the fabric of our world. Use the seven iron. <laughs> that reminded me of the Stargate where they, they keep on doing the Groundhog Day thing and Jack O'Neill rips one through the... Yeah. Right yeah. as I'm doing my backswing. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, we have uh, my favorite, which is Peg. I want you to know I'm not thinking any unsavory thoughts about you right <laughs> now. Wait, there's one. <laughs> that was, it was perfectly positioned too is right behind her and she's got to bend over and everything yeah. this this series was full of double entendres i'm gonna miss it, it. yeah hey look at that your face is fixed you'll sure look pretty in prison <laughs> <laughs> uh sam really uh, again another one of my favorites i didn't faint i did faint <laughs> i totally fainted. yeah <laughs> at the end the last words we hear from howard stark i'm gonna go for a swim you might want to stay inside. Bathing suits cause too much friction drag. Carter, well, the warning is appreciated. Yeah. And then the heart, the heart crushing one to me, which was, sir, you can't give her those. Why not? She'll just try to use them to claw her face <sighs> open. Probably, that one hurt. Yeah, probably why she'll need a mask later on. Madam Mask. Great series. I'm sure we're here next week from Haley and Lauren about what they thought of this episode. We're not going to get away with doing another episode without them telling what they said. So stay tuned for next time. In the meantime, uh, we will be discussing Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 3, Episode 11, Bouncing Back! And as a special bonus, we'll continue our Jessica Jones rewatch just a mere couple of weeks before daredevil season two starts and we will be going with jessica jones season one of course there are two seasons only one is aired episode six aka you're a winner so stay tuned for that lauren will be live tweeting on monday night on jessica jones and tuesday night with agents of shield steven you have a great network here sir you really do love being a part of it well thank you very much and uh it's I maybe I made the website, but it's the people that matter. Like it, it's run by amazing people, amazing content, and uh, as you may or may not know, if you didn't hear that pre-roll at the top, uh, Legends of Shield is indeed part of the Gunna Geek Network, and also on the Gunna Geek Network is a lovely show called Nerd Alert News. This is hosted by Chris Farrell. He several times through the week breaks down your geeky news. And in episode twenty-four called Let's Talk Virtual Reality, Chris is joined by Willie and wing to talk about new virtual reality gear there's a whole bunch of different content in there everything from smart smartphone based vr all the way up to beefy pc supported vr so check that out in episode 24 of nerd alert news you can find that at gunnageeknetwork.com and now is this a new i'm the time that we discuss uh, the news. And uh, unfortunately, uh, because we had every single thing go wrong before the episode started. Uh, first of all, I was without my ladies, but the wonderful Mr. President stepped in. But second of all, my furnace broke. I'm not kidding. Like five minutes before we were going on. So I had to rush and fix that. So the news uh, is kind of slight this week, but we'll go over a few points that our great listeners have tossed our way the first of which is the daredevil season two trailer with electra did you see that mr steven 
I did. It looks incredible. Um, you think with Daredevil season one, how can it get better? And this looks amazing. It does. I can't wait to watch this. Of course, I'll be in Chicago the weekend it comes out. I won't get a chance to watch it. I'm um, probably until the next weekend. So it's just going to burn me all week. And <laughs> there is no time in my, I do five podcasts. I got to watch uh, material. I got to prepare material. I got to post edit and that sort of thing. So the likelihood of me getting through this material uh, coupled with the days off that I have to take to go to Chicago. It's just, it's not going to get done for me. So I, I need to be in a spoiler free zone, a daredevil spoiler free zone for a week. And it's going to kill me because I really want to see what happens with Electra and uh, daredevil with Matt and the whole thing. Oh, foggy foggy's got some cojones on him in this one. And let's just back that up here for a minute. So you're going to a convention of geeks mm -hmm. and you want spoiler free. I'm I'm going to assume that everybody's going to be in the same boat as I am and that they will not have if they're attending the con they will not have had a chance to watch the episodes. I know that's a bad assumption, but I I'm really hoping that people will apply the Star Wars-esque spoiler-free zone uh at least for a week, <laughs> one week. I think with Star Wars it was almost a month with Star Wars, wasn't it? I don't know how that happened, but yeah, somehow the world stayed fairly fairly aware of possible star wars spoilers it was insane it was what made the world come together it did for a few weeks it was amazing and uh, even though the deadpool did bigger box office numbers in russia than star wars they still watch star wars in russia how cool is that that's awesome it Very is cool. cool it is cool indeed and you know what another thing that goes around the world what video games you know what another thing that goes around the world? What? Twitter verified people. Yeah. Hashtag verified. And if you put them both together all around the world, what do you get? Game Life Balance US. Oh, and Game Life Balance Australia too. But what we're talking about here is part of the Good Geek Network. It is Game Life Balance US. Cody Gaw and John Martin do this great podcast. It was called Unqualified Gamers. It has been rebranded to Game Life Balance US because let's face it, they're getting older. So they're in my ballpark where I don't have enough time to play the great video games. I got all these great video game consoles, these great video games, these great TV systems, these great sound systems. I don't have time to play video games. How did that happen, Steven? You do like 25 podcasts. That's how that happened. I do five, not 25, <laughs> five. <laughs> Five. Well, there are five podcasts. Okay. <laughs> and anyway, in this episode that we're talking about a game life balance is episode eight. Cody reviews the Deadpool movie. So bringing it back a little bit more Deadpool. Cody loved the Deadpool movie. And I honestly, I haven't met anybody that didn't like it. And I didn't like I meant I didn't meet anybody that didn't like go figure how to say that Star Wars as well. But anyway, Cody loved the Deadpool movie, which is set to surpass Passion of the Christ as the highest grossing rated R film, I think it has by now, of all time. As a relative newcomer to the franchise, hear Cody try to explain Deadpool to John, <laughs> which has to be hilarious, who then has his own insane story about recovering from wine and fireball whiskey. Uh, that would kill me, because of course I am allergic to alcohol, so good that John recovered. In this episode of Game Life Balance US. So go check that out on the Guinea Geek com network all righty this is the feedback section of the podcast so we talk about all the great feedback that we have gotten from our fan we have received i think is the correct english from our fans <laughs> over the past week and the first one and we'll get a little bit more news in this uh, as we go along and the first feedback that we received from our fans is Richard. He goes by at Kodiak GW, GWC on Twitter. And he said, this will be a great season. The rising is coming. Hashtag daredevil. And that is where I got our daredevil news. So thank you very much, Richard. I certainly appreciate it. But he is not the only one that tweeted. Uh, we had at Mr. Paracletes, he tweeted us and said, hey, with Peggy closing rifts now, do we refer to her as the Inquisitor? Oh, no. 
No. Yeah. And why do you say no? Just because it went against your question. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Mr. Contrary Network Owner. And then he also, look at this now, if you're not in the show notes, go ahead and catch the show notes later. But Mr. Paracletes tweeted us this fantastic, did you, do you see the picture? This fantastic picture. I okay, did. so this is a mashup. This is Captain America in his captain suit with the shield and everything. And he's looking at this blue police box. Looks like a telephone booth. It's a blue police box. For those of you that don't know, we're talking about the Doctor Who TARDIS. And it is Matt. It looks like Matt Smith, Doctor. Yeah. So 11. And he is holding a letter from Captain America with a heart on it that says to Peggy. And the caption is, don't worry, Captain. I'll hand it to her myself. All the oh. hearts. That was an amazing thing. And I bet you it made the rounds around Valentine's Day, but I just, I love to see it. So that was great. That was neat. Very neat. Very geeky. Very, very, very good. And at M Andy Migna, our friend, Andy of the cast, says, okay, since I don't know anything about Iron Fitz, thoughts about James Hibbard, who is, excuse me, uh, Finn Jones, who is playing Iron Fist in the Marvel Netflix series. So... Yeah, thoughts about that. Hmm. I have seen some tweets from the operator, who is formerly of Legends Podcast, and he, he said there could be worse people chosen. So, you know, I think that we're on a good path here. I, my, okay, let me ask you this, Stephen. You are a comic book fan. You have had a past comic book podcast, right? I have. Buzz. I have. What's a bad comic book casting that you have seen in Marvel recently? Can you think uh, of one? You put me on the spot there. Um, I can't think of one. I think they've hit everything that they've gone for. Recently, Marvel, yeah, Marvel, yeah, no. I think Marvel has done a good job overall, to be honest. I, I think that where you look at the bad casting history is more to do with sort of DC. Because you got to remember, the 90s, DC was the, was the player. They were the really the only player in comic cinema. And there was some really questionable casting in there. Um, I'm sure a bunch of people are going to write in and, and give us examples because Marvel did do their fair share of things. If you've ever seen the 90s Captain America, or if you right. haven't seen it, go watch it. It is an incredible piece of cinema. Let's but, limit uh, it to 2008 Iron Man and on. I can't think of one, to be honest. I really can't think of one. I think Marvel has done a very good job uh, with the casting. And I think the one casting call that people would have been questioning until they learned later was Grant Ward in season one of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. They thought he I, was, I that. they thought he was very uh, wooden, very non-interactive, and they didn't like him until he turned, and then they loved him. He's a, yeah, he's a good fair. villain. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah, yeah so. I, I do, I really think Marvel's done a, a phenomenal job as, as a whole, and I think it's because they've realized uh, that they, they gotta get it right. They have to get it right because they're on a great train. So they've earned my trust so far. Until I see some really bad calls, they have definitely earned uh, to cast whoever they choose because they do a great job. Okay, moving on. Our consultant, Black Adam, tweeted us and he said, that works. And what's he talking about, Stephen? Do you see this? Uh, I, I did not see that actually, no. All right, so what he's talking about is none other than your favorite Star Trek character, Jonathan Frakes. Oh, that's right. Is going to vo voice, I can't even pronounce this, I'll just say Jason. I think it's or, just Jason. Jason for Guardians of the Galaxy. What do you think about that? Jonathan Frakes is an amazing individual, and uh, I think he was very limited. Honestly, I liked him on TNG, but I think he was very limited by having such exposure on there. But I, I've seen him in, like do some other things, and he's a very creative person. And you got to remember, it's to voice as well. So that, that gives a whole other area of creativity. So I, I think that that's great. And uh, I, I, I do really like Jonathan Frakes. So what we're talking about is the Guardians of the Galaxy animated series airing March 13th yeah. on Disney XD. So yeah, by the time you hear this, there's still a few days to set your DVRs to go ahead and catch this. So it will be fun. And then there was a little bit of... A give and go last night on the live tweet. Lauren was doing an amazing work right before she left to go find Dottie. And she said, uh, 
once again, Peggy is a better person than me because Thompson is terrible. And this is the time where Thompson was going to uh, actually um, uh, make amends, where Peggy was making amends with Thomas Thompson. And then uh, a Donner girl said, uh, isn't her rebar scar a souvenir? And yeah, but she can use a better one, like a snow globe, maybe. And then Jeff Harris chimed in and said, yeah, but you can't wear a snow globe on your face. Well, unless it was a tattoo. We don't know anybody with tattoos on their faces, do we? No, no, of course not. Right, right. And then lastly, Andy Migna, who was doing a rewatch just a mere five hours before this podcast recorded. So that key, where could it lead? And where was Zola and Riccoli? Hmm, that is a great question. Hashtag, it's all connected. So very good, Andy Migna. We will be on the lookout for such things. And we're also going to be on the lookout for your email on episode six of Jessica Jones next week. As we said, join us next week as we discuss, and by we, I mean myself, Haley, and Lauren, because Stephen will not be here, discuss Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 3, Episode 11, Bouncing Back, and Jessica Jones, Season 1, Episode 6, a.k.a. You're a winner! Don't forget, we have a website, legendsofshield.com, that will take you to our page on the guineageek.com website. It's, it's a little URL direct trick that I learned. Mm -hmm. And I heartily recommend that if you're a part of a network to do such. And we have a voicemail line, 844-THE-BUS-1. That's 844-843-2871. And did you see the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. promo for next week, sir? Oh, I did. This is... I am so excited. This is what I was talking about. Like, this... this I just was at the edge of my seat at the mid season finale. And this has me right back in that exact same position. Uh, Ward is fake. Ward is back. I'm going to call him fake Ward. And uh, where's he, what's he going to do? What sort of trouble is he going to give them? He's going to cause all sorts of trouble. But most importantly, what I was referring to is we get to see the bus in the trailer. <laughs> the bus is flying around. We get a lot of great CGI, so that's great. So that is what the phone number is named after, is the bus from season one and two. It was destroyed, but I'm not changing the phone number. It's still the bus <laughs> to us here on Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. So we have a Facebook page, a Twitter page, and a Tumblr page that's Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. YouTube channel. Go find all our stuff on the Guinea Geek YouTube channel. And don't forget, there's forums on the Guinea Geek uh, network at forums.guineageek.com. And there's all sorts of Deadpool talk on there, too, if you want to check that out. Don't and you forget can find that. You oh, sorry. Go ahead. You can find that by searching Guinea Geek on the Tapatalk app. Oh, tap a talk. I forgot about tap a talk. Tap a tap a tap a tap. Tap that talk. Okay. On March 18th, C2E2 panel with me and five of my Gonna Geek co host brethren. And next on Geeks.Live, it will be tomorrow night, Thursday night, 9 p.m. Thursdays, is the Sterling Tribune. I know Arrow's on a hiatus, but the Sterling Tribune will soldier on. We're going to be talking tomorrow night about Arrow 2.5. That is the graphic novel that covers the time span in the show between season two and season three. Some very important information there. So if you haven't picked that up, go, go read that. And if you want to hear what happens in Arrow during that time frame, there's, like I said, some very important changes that are described there. Uh, go ahead and listen to us last night. I want to take a moment to thank our network owner, Mr. Steven, for coming in at the last second, at the, at the very last second, to say, I'm going to support Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. and I am going to be your co-host for the night. So thank you. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, I, I did have a lot of fun the last time I was on, um, and that was great because Haley and Lauren were here, but always happy to help out where I can. And uh, you're just an excellent crew on this show. I do try to check it out live every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Pacific time. That is 9 p.m. Eastern time at geeks.live. Uh, I do love checking it out. And if not, I listen to it post post production uh, later in the week. It is just a really good show. You guys do a phenomenal job. So keep up the great work. Love it. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, sir. So I just want to thank all of our listeners, both here on Blab and on Spreaker Live, and everybody that downloads the podcast later or watches it on YouTube. We really appreciate that. We appreciate everybody in the live chat, especially Adana Girl. You brought it tonight, and we really appreciate that. And uh, I know she's looking for her Guardians of the Galaxy crate, so that will be coming soon. And as Haley will say, don't forget about our giveaway! That's the Deadpool Marvel Collector Core Crate, which can be yours. Just remember to give us what your envisionment is of a date between Deadpool and Peggy Carter. And Lauren will say thank you to everybody on the live tweets on Tuesday nights and Monday night. We She really appreciates you there. So, yes, sir. If, if you don't mind, I'd like to just also take one quick moment to uh, tell everybody something that uh, we don't get often a uh, chance to talk about on all the different podcasts, but the Gun and Geek Network is something that we do accept applications. So if you are a podcaster by chance and you've got something that you are going to podcast about, uh, please go to gunnageek.com slash about and you can find out how you can apply for the network. Uh, there is a review process. Uh, I'll be honest, not all podcasts are always accepted because we do want to keep that network feel and the fit moving in the same direction. But uh, we always like to hear from new faces. So uh, if you are a podcaster, please please consider that, you know, we would love to hear from you. Absolutely. We would. All right. Until next week, until next time, until the next time you see me, I'm agent Stargate pioneer. And I'm agent Steven junior. Who made you an agent? Me. How'd that happen? No. All right. See you guys next week. Bye bye. Thank you for listening. If you want to leave us feedback, go to gunnageek.com and you will find all of our contact information in other shows. You can also visit legendsofshield.com where you'll find our complete archive of podcasts. The music heard on this podcast is by Kevin McLeod and can be found at incompetech.com. The opinions heard on this podcast are those of the individual host and do not represent Legends, Stream, or Gunna Geek. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is the property of the Disney Corporation. No infringement is intended. Woohoo! We've reached the end of the podcast, and of course... If you want to join us, you're welcome to. We have opened up the blab seat. It is open. And Christy, you're on deck because uh, you're number one on the list up top. If you want to come in, that is. Well, Stephen, thank you very much for coming by tonight. That was great. You got to talk about your favorite Marvel series that was airing. I love it. I, I'm so happy you invited me to. Uh, it's uh, I, I mean it when I say that I'm really hoping something happens and we get another season. Yeah, I, I'm really looking forward the other, to another season too, if it happens. Or, or miniseries or however they play it. But I do think that the, two hour, the three two-hour episodes really killed it. That was grueling to get through. Yeah. And then, of course, in between, we talked about it before, but in between season one and season two, the episodes were not available anywhere yeah that's bizarre it's really odd um i don't know why like that's very un unmarvel to make something it is hard to find yeah, i i think well i think they were just trying to make up the difference because uh the show was only getting ratings in the the fives and sixes so they were trying to make up a little financial uh difference and they so they gave it out only to a little place and what they don't what none of these places understand is the way to build your fandom throughout the first couple of seasons at least is just get it out there make yeah. it free and they, it killed defiance too oh yeah let's put it on amazon prime every everybody will go over to amazon prime there might have been a year or two premature for that like top gear is going to be on amazon Prime, the original cast, anyway. And are, are you going to watch the original cast, or are you going to watch uh, Joey? Uh, I'm going to watch the, <laughs> Joey. I'm going to watch the original cast, and uh, or am I? Because that's the thing. I think they are still premature for Amazon Prime. I, I think that uh, I cannot get it in Canada. 
without That's some true. without some creativity. Um, I'm hoping somehow they find a way to get Canadian rights. I don't know. Like maybe maybe this will be what changes it because uh, Top Gear has has such a big popular or following. Uh, the, or those three. Let's call them those three. Have such a big following outside of the states. So maybe this will make uh, Amazon Prime rethink it. But uh, the, the you know the other thing to do with uh, this show specifically that I think didn't help them was that they carried over too much stuff from season one. I think it was hard for some people to follow who were coming in new. Yeah. And let's be honest, season one, when you were, when you had watched several seasons of agents of shield and then agent Carter came on, I enjoyed it, but it at first, the first few episodes didn't meet my expectations. I had several people that I had conversations with that were, that were the same as me, which was I'll wait and I'll see. I don't know that I'm going to keep watching. And then it hooked me. So I think that there's a lot of people who probably in the first season discounted it right away. And then maybe the second season came back and they're like, oh, let's try it again. And then they were lost. Right. By the way, anybody want to get the open seat? It's right there. Open seat. I, I don't think so. I think I think we're it for the night. I think it was just the Steven and SP show. So basically an episode of Better Podcasting that is talking about a TV show. So. And that's what you got. Yeah, why not? We'll, we'll just do that. <laughs> well, thank you, live audience, for coming by. Uh, my apologies that I was not Lauren or Haley. I know that I did disappoint. Um, they are phenomenal people. And uh, I, I always, I know it's your, your little gag, your, your shtick that you do with the uh, Marvel. Uh, yeah, please hire them. But they, they are worthy of it. They are just incredible individuals and they so are. knowledgeable. So uh, I love listening. You guys do a great job. And uh, if all goes well, they will return next week and you won't have to see my ugly mug again. Yes, and we would appreciate that very much. <laughs> all right. Well, that, Spreaker, that's going to be it for tonight. I'm going to sign off on Spreaker. So thank you very much. And you can catch us next week. And bye, Blab.